Pablo Escobar was and still is considered the wealthiest drug lord to ever walk the earth. But with his not so expected death in 1993, a lot of his wealth, which sums up to billions of dollars, suddenly vanished. While only a tiny fraction was eventually recovered, we can't help but ask the question, what exactly happened to all of Pablo Escobar's wealth after he died? Well, stick around, cause we're about to find out. The largest portion of Pablo's money was found back in 2015 by a 65-year-old farmer, Jose Cartolos, while he was building trenches for his palm plantation in Colombia. Jose had the luckiest day in his life when he stumbled upon $600 million buried in plastic drums on his farmland. I can't even imagine how happy this lucky old man must have been. But after word got out and the Colombian authorities got to know about this huge chunk of cash, the government took possession of the money and in turn used it for social and economic purposes in Colombia. And if you're thinking what I'm thinking, you're probably asking why he even let the word out, right? Well, some people are just different. And speaking of people being different, Pablo Escobar's real-life cousin, Nicholas Escobar, also found about $18 million stashed into the wall of his house where Escobar used to carry out some of his operations in Medellin. Nicholas was an integral part of Escobar's narcotics affairs while he was alive, so he had a little insight into Escobar's unusual way of hiding cold hard cash. So, after Pablo's death, Nicholas found this money stashed hidden behind a wall, but it didn't come without a price. According to Nicholas's statement, he was kidnapped and tortured by rival cartel members after his lucky discovery of the stash, which he also claimed he found through a vision. And if this statement from Nicholas doesn't particularly make sense to you, well, it's because it doesn't. A vision? Come on, man. Really? But anyways, not all of Pablo's money was lost after his death because some of it was looted even before he died. In November 1989, $5 million was dug up in plastic drums somewhere in Medellin. A year later, $26 million and 150 kilos of gold were also dug up in Colombia. And in 2006, $6 million was found in the jungle, where Pablo and the Medellin cartel cooked the cocaine supply to the rest of the world. And to be clear, these millions are just a scratch on the surface of Pablo Escobar's immense wealth. In his prime, Pablo Escobar was making about $150 million a week and about $810 per second. If that statement left you shocked, then what you're about to hear next will literally send chills down your spine. Pablo was named the seventh richest man in the world by Forbes when he was still alive. His net worth was estimated to be around $30 billion, with reports that he lost about 10% of that net worth annually due to his methods of storing the money. I need you to understand that Pablo had so much money, his number one problem was how to save it. He obviously couldn't use the bank because no bank in Colombia was ready to associate with him. And besides, Pablo himself didn't trust banks. He preferred stacking his money in plastic drums and storing them behind walls, burying them underground and keeping them in the craziest places you can imagine. Like the cash inflow was so massive, Pablo reportedly spent $1,000 on rubber bands every week to bundle his cash together. But the craziest part of Pablo's method of storing money was that after giving his men the location to store the money, he would kill them. This was so that only he knew the exact location the money was stored. It was all in his head and all part of his master plan. The only other person who was part of this plan was his brother, Roberto Escobar. Roberto was the one who had the idea of storing the money behind walls, known amongst Pablo's men as caletas, and each caleta could take up to $5 million. So, imagine all the houses and buildings owned by Escobar in Colombia, Florida, and Mexico. Then imagine how much of these caletas must have been hidden in those properties even till this day. Now, obviously, not all of Escobar's wealth was in liquid cash. Most of it was tied into assets like his cars, houses, and private jets. The most expensive of his properties was his home, known as Hacienda Napoles, located between Bogota and Medellin. This property was valued at a whopping $63 million. It had a soccer field, because we all know Pablo loves soccer. It had some dinosaur statues, artificial lakes, a tennis court, and a lot of other fun stuff. But sadly, the Colombian government took over his property after his death along with his 15 private jets and six helicopters. His car collection was another wonderful addition to his wealth. He drove a 1972 Mercedes 600 Pullman, which was mostly driven by heads of state back then. 
and since Pablo rightfully saw himself as the president of Colombia, a dream he had for many years, he decided to purchase this vehicle which cost about $200,000 back then. However, this luxurious car was destroyed by members of the Cali cartel even before Pablo's death. This rival cartel also destroyed other luxurious cars, like his 1964 Porsche 356 and his Mercedes 1990 L Roadster. His luxurious car collection was a symbol of his power and affluence as a drug kingpin. But when things went south between Pablo and the Colombian government, other cartels like Los Pepes and the Cali cartel gained an upper hand and used this little advantage to sabotage most of Pablo's properties. In the middle of these questions about where exactly Pablo's wealth went after his death, a man named Roberto Sendoya, who claimed to be a secret son of Pablo Escobar, released a book titled Son of Escobar. Now in this book, Roberto narrated how his mother was killed in a shootout, but he was saved by an MI6 agent who was in Medellin to monitor Escobar's activities. This MI6 agent ended up taking young Roberto with him on his trip back to the UK. But this is where the story gets interesting. According to Roberto's book, this MI6 agent gave him a coded map of all the secret locations Pablo hid and buried his funds in Florida. But this didn't really make any sense because I literally just told you about how Pablo killed his own men just so no one apart from himself knew the locations of that stash. But anyways, Roberto claimed that this coded map helped him find some of Pablo's buried money in Florida. And I don't know about you, but this story just doesn't sit right with me. Now the truth is, the only reason why Roberto can even lay any claims to Escobar's wealth is that Pablo Escobar himself didn't leave a will or any kind of trust fund for his family. Now obviously, there would have been some reserved cash for Pablo's children and his wife, but it was still very hard for his family, especially because they had to flee Colombia almost immediately after Pablo Escobar's death. Now it's quite funny when you really think about it. Pablo Escobar, a man born into abject poverty, had so much money that he didn't know what to do with it. Born on December 1st, 1949, Pablo Escobar began engaging in criminal activities right from a young age, selling illegal cigarettes and fake lottery tickets to earn himself a couple of bucks. Now, it was at a point like this in Pablo's life that it became clear who he would eventually become. Despite making a substantial amount of money from these petty crimes, Pablo always wanted to go bigger and bigger, no matter the cost. This made him try his hands at drug smuggling and kidnapping before one thing led to another and he finally started the Medellin Cartel in 1976. The Medellin Cartel opened doors to his shipment of cocaine to countries like Bolivia, Peru, and Ecuador before hitting a jackpot in the US. In his prime, Pablo was responsible for 80% of the cocaine shipped into the US, delivering almost 70 to 80 tons of cocaine per month. Ah, the 80s. He made a lot of money, no doubt about that. But all that money couldn't save him when he fell to the ground, staring at the gun pointed at his body to the moment he finally died. So to answer the question of what happened to his hidden wealth after his death, the answer is no one knows the full story. We definitely know a few things, which we've talked about in this video, but the truth is no one knows what happened to the rest. Were they looted? Did rival cartels destroy him? Or are they still hidden today? We really can't say. But in the meantime, let us know your thoughts on this in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching, and maybe you want to check out this other video shown on your screen. It's pretty awesome too, so click on it, and I'll see you there.